Yes, folks, Jacinda Ardern's takeover of New Zealand is linked to the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, to understand this, we need to look around the world and realise that communism is global and that everything is happening in unison. We know that COVID-19 was released on the world by communist China. We know that the Black Lives Matter movement is controlled by Marxists. We know that the United Nations is heavily influenced by communist China. We know that the left-wing mainstream media is aiding and abetting this global Marxist movement. We know that Jacinda Ardern is a communist and is a puppet of the United Nations. And we know that Joe Biden is a pre-selected puppet of the radical Marxist left. With every citizen of Venezuela and Cuba and Nicaragua, it stands with the righteous struggle for freedom. The patriots here today fled socialism to find freedom and socialism and other things, as you know, and uh, a step beyond socialism in many cases. And now Joe Biden and the radical left are trying to impose the same system, socialism plus, in America. Biden is a puppet of Bernie Sanders, AOC, the militant left. Yes, the militant left like Ayana Presley who pushes Black Lives Matter violence. I'm looking to the public. You know, this is as much about public outcry and organizing and mobilizing and applying pressure so that this GOP-led Senate and that these governors that continue to carry water for this administration, putting the American people in, in harm's way, um, turning a deaf ear to the needs of our families and our communities, hold them accountable. Well, make the phone call, send the email, show up. You know, there needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there's unrest in our lives. Wow. Anyway, now, folks, listen to uh, Rudy Giuliani. He sums up the Black Lives Matter movement absolutely correctly. The president blusters and the president tries to draw attention to himself uh, and rarely uh, has much to back it up. What would you say to Mayor de Blasio, Mayor? Mayor de Blasio is pathetic. Uh, he has his... In, there, there are times in which a, a public official can be so incompetent, and he is, that people actually die as a result of his being in office. And that's been the case with Mayor de Blasio both during the pandemic and now with the irresponsible left-wing socialist actions that he's taken. He's driven by a ridiculously failed philosophy, which he somehow robs him of the ability to see reality. So how, how would you, in the middle of a crime wave, disband the most effective part of your police department, the anti-crime unit? How would you let 8,000 people out of prison? during a period of time like that, or not go crazy over the new bail law that he and Cuomo put into effect so that all the rioters that were arrested were put back out on the street within a day. We've had people let out by him who within one day of uh, getting out have raped somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 he put 8,000 prisoners out on the street. He doesn't consider drug dealers violent criminals. So, you know, there's this great sympathy for the drug user who was treated harshly. But there's a difference between the drug user and the drug, drug dealer. The drug dealer yeah. is, by nature, a violent criminal. They all own guns and they all shoot people. He puts both of them out on the street. If, if, you know, if I had this city for one month, one month, I could change it around in one single month. If I could be allowed to do what I had to do, and all of it would be legal. He is an idiot. He's an incompetent and he's a communist. You know, it, I, I have lived in, the New York, in New York and the New York area long enough to have seen it go up and down and to see what happened when you were mayor and to see how much better, how much safer the streets became then with the policies that were in place. But what we see now is, in, and I want to talk about the broader scene across the country as well, but what I'm wondering is it seems like there's two different viewpoints of looking at this. And I don't think at the Democratic National Convention this week, we're going to hear much about what's happening in, in these cities. And I think that there's a lot of people who don't live in these cities who, who don't see it. They don't understand necessarily what is going on. But when I see it and I see the boarded up windows 
windows. I see them here in Washington, D.C. behind me. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking what is happening. But but yeah. there's so many people in the country, uh, Mr. Mayor, who don't see it or aren't hearing about it. Well, you know, Martha, it, uh, I don't know any better way to describe it than it breaks my heart. I mean, I spent um, eight years as mayor and four years preparing to be mayor, 12 years of my life with the sole focus being how to reduce crime, which I was told could not be done. I was told it by my best friends that I shouldn't be mayor because I'd ruin my career by failing like people had failed 30 years uh, prior to me. And I was convinced I could do it. I, I had very good police commissioners, Bratton Safer and, and Bernie Carrick. I had great programs from uh, James Q. Wilson, the broken windows theory, which he did away with four years ago. Terrible mistake. He really isn't intellectually strong enough to understand it. I mean, you have to understand the man is limited. He is not that smart. He is a silly left winger, meaning he went on his honeymoon to Cuba and he supported the Sandinistas. Now, if you're that silly, you really shouldn't be running a government. And in my view, and I know this is a very broad one, Democrats don't know how to run cities. So they're too impractical. Every city you're talking about is a Democratic city. Chicago, even more murders than here. This weekend, it was a murder field in Chicago. Same thing with Philadelphia, with a district attorney who doesn't, a district attorney put in there by George Soros, who doesn't prosecute property crimes. Or you want to look at Atlanta? You want to look at uh, some of the other Democrats? Yeah, I want to Portland. show everybody this Portland? horrible Portland video. Like look at this horrible video from Portland. Um, it, it, it's just unbelievable. Watch, watch what happened to this man. He gets pulled out of his truck. This is a he war. He gets beaten. This, this and then he's on the ground and everybody walks away. They tell him he's not allowed to move. Yeah. And then yeah. he gets roundhouse kicked by this guy in the head. I, I mean, it, it's unbelievable. Black Lives I can't understand I, I like why everybody know. in the country isn't, isn't talking about this. I can't understand it. Yeah, I, and I can't understand why major American corporations are giving money to Black Lives Matter, which is run by three communists who are uh, avowed terrorists. The money that they get comes from a terrorist named Susan Rosenberg, who was convicted and sent to prison for 58 years for being involved in a conspiracy to kill cops. She's funneling the money to them. If you if you just spend 10 minutes, Martha, no, I know. and read what they stand for, they stand for the end of <laughs> yeah. our government. And, and it's clear. And they don't if, care if about black lives. These founders, if you watch the founders on, you can get, you can pull up these videos. Very easy. They talk about their Marxist background. I was down in the street uh, the other night, and there are people out there with Klansmen, a hung, you know, uh, effigy of a Klansman, and it says that cops are Klansmen. And then right on the corner here in D.C. are you know 25 you know peaceful police officers standing there, you know, protecting their right to do that. So I mean, these are the the things that people have to consider as we look ahead. Uh, in this coming election, just decide, you know, where they stand on it. So, uh, right. Mayor Giuliani, final thought, sir, if you could. My, my final thought is the president really should consider very carefully declaring Black Lives Matter a domestic terrorist organization. Just today, they had four or five beatings they took part in. They've been recorded saying that police officers should be murdered and killed. And one of their members just this weekend defended looting as people are entitled to do it because they have no bread. Of course, they were taking televisions. They were taking dr uh, dresses. Yeah, they said it was reparations. They were taking liquor. They were basically engaged in stealing. So this is an illegal organization, and their intent is to overthrow our government. Exactly. And, and Jacinda Ardern is doing something very similar, except she is using COVID-19 as her ruse. Yeah, now, folks, uh, listen to the vulgar mainstream media aiding and abetting the fake narrative that this is about black lives. All useful idiots. They shouldn't be saying that he was killed because you could be killed by a virus. You could be killed by the weather. You could be killed. He was murdered. You idiot. This has nothing to do with George Floyd. He was merely the trigger. He was murdered by a scummy piece of Yeah, we're mad. We're mad right now. 
people aren't standing up for um, indigenous peoples. Oh, here's that big word, racism, he learnt at school. And, and black lives, and I feel that as a, as a white male, um, as someone who has white privilege, I really need to... Oh, white privilege, something else he learnt at school. Stand up for uh, our minorities uh, and also our indigenous, indigenous people around the world and say it's not okay, we need to stop, and um, if racism... I wonder, do we sometimes in New Zealand think that uh, we're sort of removed from racism here? Because if you look at the stats, more than half of the people in prison are Māori. If you're Māori or Pacifica, you're two to three times more likely to get a fine if you're pulled over by police. I've had family and I've even experienced it with my uncle. Like, we'll be driving in the car and then we get pulled over, but we have our registration, we have everything. But we still get pulled over and we don't know why. And I remember the cop guy saying... Um, Oh, because you didn't indicate or something like that. and then I'll Wow, the cops pulled me over once for not indicating as well. So I must be a victim. T I must be a victim too. Yeah, and of, co of course uh, Jacinda supports this um, divide and conquer nonsense. Seven past seven, so what happened to the rules, eh? Protesters all over the grounds of Parliament, well in excess of 100, not a sign of any social distancing, even the Deputy Prime Minister this morning asking questions. The Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, is with us. Good morning. Good morning. Do you condone that activity? No. Liar. You would have stopped it otherwise. And what about the police? Where were they? Uh, they were present as they are at other protests, but taking the exact same approach that they have all the way through. Uh, they take a graduated approach, Mike, and ultimately those are their calls. I should add that these are operational decisions, but the same approach that they've taken for any area where they've seen um, uh, gatherings, which is first educate, warn, before they then move into enforcement action. Well, why didn't they take any enforcement? Because presumably when they educated and uh, warned, nothing happened. Again, Mike, I am not going to um, uh, issue dictates on the police's operational decisions. They are for them. Uh, here you go again, blaming the police. You are the Prime Minister and you control this particular police force. Now, in this video, Jacinda Ardern talks about the updated uh, election date. Now, listen very closely to what is being discussed. Um, you'll have heard me set out all of the factors that I took into account. For me, it would not have been appropriate to make a decision based solely on the views of individual political parties because an election date is one of those things when you move it, the last thing you want is it to be seen to favour any political parties. That would be wrong. Did you give any thought to um, what has been mooted by the National Party is by forming a some sort of super majority and then pushing the election back into 2021? Wow, did you hear that? Anyway, I'll just read out his, his question to you. Uh, did you give any thought to what had been mooted by the National Party about forming some sort of supermajority and then pushing the election back into 2021? Wow, that would be the ultimate communist takeover, wouldn't it? No, no. No, my view is that in these circumstances, in these times, uh, what we need is the, dis the ability to make decisions very quickly. We've seen the importance of that in the pandemic response. Um, we have uh, the absolute right and ability to do that as government until polling, uh, until polling day and thereafter. After the election, that's when caretaker provisions come in but not beforehand. And I do think that that's important to remember from uh, a, a constitutional perspective for New Zealand. Say this is, this is the last delay, barring maybe yes. a massive level four outbreak. Yeah. There's no yeah. level I, I have absolutely no intention at all um, to change from this point. My view is... Yeah, now that last bit raises even more questions. How can she be certain the new election date won't change? How does she know what the virus is going to do unless she knows something we don't? Something really, 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 really stinks here. And that talk about National and Labour for forming a supermajority really reeks of full-on communism. <laughs> 